Africa, a distant and mysterious continent where primitive tribes still dwell and exotic animals roam. It's a land of endless savanna plains, scorching deserts, full-flowing rivers, and untouched tropical forests. Its wealth of plant and animal life is unique and astounding in its diversity. Africa is the second largest continent by area, occupying nearly a quarter of the Earth's surface. Within the African continent, including island nations, there are 54 independent countries, together home to an estimated population of about 1.5 billion. Geographically, Africa is centrally located, with the prime meridian and the equator crossing through it. The second longest river in the world, the Nile, flows through it, stretching 4,100 miles. And Lake Victoria is one of the largest freshwater lakes globally. The Sahara Desert covers an area of Africa as large as the contiguous United States. Four of the five fastest animals on the planet are found in Africa. The cheetah, wildebeest, lion, and Thompson's gazelle. Furthermore, Africa is home to the largest land animal, the African elephant which can weigh anywhere from six to seven tons. To this day, there are several linguistic hypotheses from etymologists regarding the origin of the name Africa, among which the following deserves attention. The first part of this word, Afri, was the name of a native tribe that lived in Northern Africa near Carthage in the third century BC. The combination Ka is a formative suffix in the Latin language, which means country or land. Anyone who has visited Africa even once will forever carry unforgettable impressions of it. Friends, we've all probably heard about the wonders of the world, which are always for some reason counted as seven, it's hard to say who and when precisely determined this as the measure of wonders. But when it comes to Africa, the quantity of astonishing things within it is significantly greater. It's entirely fair to call the entire continent the eighth wonder of the world. Victoria Falls, the Nile River, the world's tallest stratovolcano Kilimanjaro, the coral reefs of the Red Sea, and the great migration in the Serengeti Mara ecosystem. This is just a partial list of the unique natural landmarks that captivate with their uniqueness. Not to mention the richness of the continent's nature. In the whole world, you won't find a place with greater diversity. What's the reason for such abundance? Africa's location in a warm climactic zone is what accounts for the continent's rich fauna and flora. Additionally, Africa consistently experiences warm temperatures and receives a significant amount of atmospheric precipitation. Therefore, the natural zones of equatorial evergreen forests, savannas, and deserts are a true paradise for many animals and birds. However, among this diversity of African wildlife, one group of animals stands out distinctly, unmistakable from any other. Zebras. Alongside the lion, elephant, giraffe, and hippopotamus, the zebra is another symbol of Africa's diverse animal kingdom. That's truly the case. So it's not surprising that the animal is named zebra, a word of African origin that has remained unchanged and easily assimilated into almost all European languages. Interestingly, during the Roman Empire, zebras were referred to as tiger horses. Our striped beauty is an African relative of the common horse and belongs to the horse genus, the horse family, with its unique black and white striped skin pattern. 
It's worth noting that zebras are found exclusively on the African continent, and their striking coloration has made them some of the most well-known mammals in the world. These animals were once widespread across the entire African continent, but their population has significantly declined. In the wild, several zebra species exist, and to provide a more comprehensive introduction to these animals in the context of our video, let's say a few words about their species diversity. Birchels, or plains zebra, Latin equus quagga or equus burchelli, is the most common species, named after the English botanist William Birchell. The pattern on the skin of these animals depends on their habitat. Northern subspecies have a more vibrant pattern, while the southern ones differ slightly with paler stripes on the lower body and a somewhat ochre hue against a white background. Virtual zebras are medium-sized animals, weighing between 639 to 749 pounds. The habitat range of this zebra species covers the southeastern part of the African continent. Unlike the mountain and grevy zebras, the plain zebra lacks a neck fold and a grid-like pattern on its hindquarters. It's worth noting that only the plain zebra embarks on remarkable migratory journeys in response to the ever-changing seasons and food availability. When faced with drought, it's the pangs of hunger that drive them toward more verdant territories. Grevy zebra, also known as the desert zebra, Latin equus grevii, owes its name to none other than Jules Grevy, president of the Third French Republic. This unique zebra species was bestowed as a striped gift by Emperor Menelik II of Ethiopia in the late 19th century. Distinguished by its larger stature compared to other members of the horse family, Grevy zebras boast elongated bodies measuring up to three meters in length and weigh in at a remarkable 880 pounds or more. A notable feature that sets the desert zebras apart is their substantial swath of white or yellowish coloring, accentuated by a broad, dark stripe running down their backs. The other stripes on Grevy zebras are comparatively narrower than those of other zebra species, arranged in closer proximity to one another. These stripes, rather than being pure black, exhibit a rich brown hue, and interestingly, the zebra's belly is devoid of stripes. Even their ears carry distinct characteristics, being both round and brown. The mountain zebra, Latin equus zebra, boasts a rather dark coloration with a nearly jet black coat adorned with fine white stripes. These stripes extend down to the very hooves of the animal. Mountain zebras have adapted to thrive in the high altitude regions of the African continent, at elevations reaching up to 6,560 feet above sea level. Within this species, naturalists identify two additional subspecies, the Cape Mountain Zebra and Hartman Zebra. The Cape Mountain Zebra, Latin Equus Zebra Zebra, is now rigorously protected in South African countries due to their ruthless extermination at the beginning of the 20th century. Presently, there are only about 400 representatives of this subspecies in the national parks of the Republic of South Africa, near the Cape of Good Hope. The Cape Mountain Zebra is the smallest among zebra subspecies. What sets it apart in terms of its striped pattern is the fact that the finest stripes are located on the animal's head. These zebras stand at a wither's height of only 45 to 50 inches and weigh between 551 to 573 pounds. 
The subspecies of Hartman's mountain zebra, Latin Equus zebra hartmani, is also on the brink of extinction due to consistent hunting by local farmers, who are protecting grazing lands exclusively for domestic livestock. Unfortunately, over the past century, the population of Hartman zebra has decreased by almost tenfold. According to the latest data from conservation organizations, their numbers now total only 15,000 individuals, and you can only encounter this subspecies of zebra in the mountainous regions of Namibia. Like all members of the horse family, zebras are herbivores. For them, there is no better feast than the vast plains of savanna, covered with lush, diverse grasses. Zebras also enjoy indulging in leaves, roots, and ripe fruits. An average zebra's body measures over 2 meters in length, with a weight typically ranging from 300 to 350 kilograms. Males, generally a bit larger, stand taller with a more robust build. Zebras have relatively short legs, ending with very sturdy hooves, an indispensable part of their locomotion. In the wild, plain zebras can travel approximately 40 kilometers per day, causing natural wear and tear on their hooves. However, their moderate weight and active lifestyle enable zebras to undergo the regrowth of hooves with minimal discomfort. Initially, these newly formed hooves are relatively soft. All individuals of this species possess a short and stiff mane. The central strands of their mane's hair extend in a distinctive brush-like fashion from the head down to the tail. Zebras don't run as swiftly as horses, for example, but when needed, they can reach speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Interestingly, when facing danger, zebras employ a unique running technique, zigzagging, effectively exhausting their pursuer, making them almost unreachable prey for many predators. Zebras have rather poor eyesight, although they can discern all colors except orange. On the other hand, nature has endowed them with a highly developed sense of smell, allowing the animals to detect potential threats from a significant distance and timely alert the herd. However, lions are also well aware of this feature and hence approach zebras from an upwind side, making it more challenging for zebras to detect their scent. Zebras produce a variety of sounds that mimic barking dogs, horse neighing, or even the braying of a frightened donkey. The type of sound they produce depends on the circumstances they find themselves in. Mountain zebras, for instance, make a distinctive barking contact call, while the cry of a grevy zebra resembles something akin to the snorting of a hippopotamus coupled with the braying of a donkey. Loud snorting is often a sign of alarm. Whinnying usually occurs when the animals are in pain, but it can also be heard during friendly interactions among them. Zebras sleep while standing, and within the herd, there are always a couple of sentinels ready to sound the vocal alarm in case of danger. And finally, friends, the most intriguing question of all, why are zebras striped? Many pose even more intricate questions. What color is a zebra? White with black stripes or the other way around? Well, there's no magic here. Fierce debates continue to rage about the base color of zebras. Are they white with black stripes or vice versa? Naturalists unanimously argue that the dominant color is, in fact, black. Nonetheless, the unique stripes on a zebra's skin create an individual pattern for each one. Much like no two tigers have identical stripes, 
and we all have unique fingerprints. Interestingly, the stripes on the zebra's neck and head are arranged vertically, adorning the body at a slight angle, while the legs are embellished with distinct horizontal lines. Another remarkable feature, zebra offspring identify their mother through her individual stripes. Moreover, zebra stripes serve as a form of camouflage, visually blending the animal with the scorching, shimmering air of the African savanna, effectively disorienting predators. Additionally, the stripes act as excellent protection against bothersome tsetse flies and horseflies, which respond only to polarized colors and therefore perceive zebras as inedible. Although there isn't a unanimous consensus among naturalists regarding this hypothesis, some believe that another reason more convincing for the avoidance of zebras by tsetse flies is the specific odor that zebras emit, which repels these dangerous flies. Furthermore, the stripes serve a necessary role in temperature regulation. There's a well-founded belief among scientists that the black and white coloration of zebras aids in cooling the animal. The reason is that different parts of the body heat up differently. White areas heat up less and black areas heat up more. This temperature difference induces the circulation of air currents around the animal, helping the zebra to endure the relentless African sun for extended periods. It's worth noting that the striped skin of zebras is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also exceptionally strong, even capable of withstanding the sharp and powerful jaws of crocodiles. However, the origin of the black and white stripes on a zebra's body and the specific evolutionary process that painted it remain subjects of ongoing scientific debates. Zebras typically live in small groups of six to 10 individuals, consisting of several females with their offspring. There's only one stallion as the leader. He protects the group, determines the dominant mare, selects a place for the night, and guards pregnant females and newborn foals. During a drought, before a long migratory journey, Zebra groups come together to form huge herds, jointly overcoming the challenging path in search of new pastures. By the way, along with antelopes and wildebeests, such massive gatherings of animals can number over one and a half million individuals. Predators seldom dare to hunt amidst the multitude of zebras, rightfully fearing the powerful kicks from their hooves and the large, sharp teeth that zebras use to bite back, inflicting considerable damage on their attackers. Consequently, predators often target isolated or weakened individuals who have separated from the group. It's worth noting that zebras, these beautiful striped horses, are exceptionally clean animals. The young and playful ones enjoy rolling in the dust, presumably as a dust bath that cleans them thoroughly. The adults also take care of their skin's cleanliness, often bathing in mud. You might wonder why. It's quite simple. The clay-like mud dries and eventually peels off in coarse flakes, taking along bothersome insects and other debris. Moreover, zebras have developed a useful friendship with little birds called oxpeckers. These bold birds perch on the zebra's backs and use their sharp beaks to pick off parasites from their skin. By the way, hippos practice similar procedures. In general, zebras are peaceful and friendly animals. They coexist well with antelopes, buffalo, giraffes, and even ostriches because of this advantageous cooperation helps protect them from predators. At the very least, the tall giraffe will spot a threat much earlier and immediately alert to potential danger. 
However, zebras are rather capricious animals, and their mood can change rapidly. Behind their incredible beauty and grace lies absolute disobedience and excessive stubbornness. It must be said that no one has managed to saddle a zebra yet, and even the most skilled rider will face quite a challenge attempting to do so. To get obedience and compliance from a wild animal like a zebra, you first need to be able to capture it. As is known for many centuries, humans captured wild horses, for example, using lassos. Zebras cannot be caught this way because they have a unique reflex. They swiftly shake off a lasso with a sudden movement of their head and neck. Even for the most experienced animal trapper, the chances of achieving this are quite slim. Furthermore, zebras themselves are quite small and low to the ground, making riding them uncomfortable. Their height ranges from about 41 to 59 inches, while a horse's height can reach 70. A zebra's mood, whether good or bad, can be discerned from its ears. When the animal is calm, its ears are straight and almost immobile. But when it is anxious or frightened, its ears are pointed forward and become nervously twitchy. In captivity, zoo and wildlife park workers often determine whether or not to enter an enclosure based on the position of the zebra's ears. A zebra can transform from being calm and good-natured to becoming frenzied in an instant. It's ready to kick its hooves with such force that keepers may lose their front teeth at best. Taming zebras is difficult. They don't tolerate captivity well. Even if you constantly offer them the greenest grass and clear water at their feeding trough. So what do zebras eat in the wild? Typically their diet consists of a variety of grasses leaves from the shrubs and bushes, tree bark, buds, young shoots, and roots. Their somewhat calorie-poor plant-based diet requires them to consume food for most of their waking hours. Zebras have a relatively simple stomach structure, but their digestive system is home to a large number of microorganisms that aid in breaking down cellulose and enriching the animal with proteins and vitamins. Interestingly, zebras prefer to nibble on the tips of grasses, as they are arguably the most delicious part. While they leave the lower parts of plants, including the roots, which are highly appreciated by other herbivorous mammals. Adult zebras have 40 strong teeth that grow over two years after an individual's birth. Zebras are highly sensitive to water scarcity, as they rely on it heavily, especially since they often feed on roots. That's why they strive to stay close to water sources and may drink at least once a day. In fact, zebras are very disciplined within the herd. Even when approaching a watering hole, they won't jostle, but instead maintain strict order. The dominant mare leads the way, followed by the others with their foals and then the lead stallion. Zebras need about eight to 10 liters of water and lactating females require even more. If rivers and lakes dry up, resourceful zebras use their sturdy hooves to carefully dig artificial wells. Small pits, usually about a half a meter deep. Once enough water collects at the bottom, Zebras kneel to reach it, thus quenching their thirst. Zebras typically inhabit closed family groups, which are often referred to as harems. Such an organization among animals implies the strict observance of hierarchical rules within the herd. These rules are crucial for survival in the wild. For instance, among the females in a herd, one or two dominant individuals are established. 
these are usually the ones that have been with a zebra group the longest. During arduous migratory journeys, it is the dominant females and their offspring who lead the procession, with the rest following them. Interestingly, the family stallion always trails behind. Not because his legs hurt or he's tired, but because this is what his status obligates him to do. When it comes to defining grazing and watering territories, or protecting pregnant and nursing females, the herd leader will undoubtedly not be relegated to the back. He will be at the forefront, and his subdued whinny will be interpreted by the herd as a command to act accordingly. Practically all zebra species, the unmarried, statusless males, which are still not part of the hierarchy, form microgroups within the larger group. As long as the dominant harem stallion is strong and healthy, the bachelor males behave politely and with restraint. However, the day inevitably arrives when a daring challenge is thrown to the territorial alpha stallion. The newcomer initially engages in some pushing and shoving, but then, getting all worked up, begins to thrash with their hooves and bite fiercely. Physical advantages of the rebel often secure their leadership. The weapon, of course, is the strong hooves of the hind legs, the striking force of which is sufficient to establish their personal dominance in one go. Even a lion's skull cannot withstand a hoof strike so one can imagine how powerful it is. Moreover, with their strong teeth, a rival will attempt to bite in the most vulnerable spot on the head, the lips. Injured or partially bitten lips are practically a slow death for a zebra. It won't be able to feed itself and will inevitably perish from hunger. The defeated male may remain in the herd, but he loses the right to mate first while the victor gains the hierarchical status of a leader. However, zebras are capable of not only ruthlessly and mercilessly testing their strength, they also exhibit entirely opposite emotions. Surprisingly, these animals are capable of cordial greetings among themselves. They rub and sniff each other, nuzzle with their cheeks, affectionately embrace with their necks, and elegantly rest their heads on one another. Zebras reinforce their familial and social bonds with each other through grooming as well. The animals in a harem gently nibble the necks, shoulders, and backs of their relatives with their teeth and lips, grooming their manes and tails. This unique form of grooming typically occurs between mothers and their offspring, as well as during the mating season between stallions and mares. In addition, this form of grooming helps establish strong social connections and significantly reduces aggressive tendencies within the herd. Interestingly, zebras are quite adept at communicating through facial expressions and gestures. The flexibility of their lips allows them to create emotionally charged expressions on their faces. The positions of their heads, ears, and tails also play a significant role. Zebras can signal their intention to kick by lowering their ears and flicking their tails. Pinned back ears, baring teeth, and head nodding are threatening gestures that demonstrate the owner's less than pleasant mood. Zebras don't have a specific breeding season, but it often begins in late spring or early summer. The courtship rituals between zebras are characterized by a unique level of tactility. It's astonishing that zebras are capable of experiencing emotions. They lay their heads on each other's backs or necks and remain in such embrace for an extended period. The graceful spectacle of striped beauty during mating elicits genuine admiration as the animals achieve incredible symmetry in their striped bodies. Without a doubt, this harmony among zebras is a display of love and tenderness. The gestation period of a zebra lasts about 280 days, 
births often occur directly on the grazing grounds. The mother carefully licks the newborn, which can stand on its legs within 10 to 15 minutes, take its first wobbly steps within five minutes, and cover a considerable distance within half an hour. The female does not allow other females near the foal, so the foal will only remember her unique striped pattern. The zebra foal starts nursing from its mother when it's only an hour old, and after a few weeks, it begins to nibble on young grass in small amounts. The young zebra foal has a straightforward and lightweight protection mechanism in the wild. All it needs to do is stay close to its mother. After all, the little one is not yet capable of spotting cunning predators, and it cannot escape them on its still shaky legs. But these newborn foals behave very obediently, as if they know they should not stray far from their mothers. Because right next to her is the safest place to hide from enemies. In times of danger, zebras quickly push the foals into the middle of the herd. The dominant stallion will give vocal signals to the entire group, and they will be ready to protect the offspring. Zebra mares with their foals form a separate group. They will stay together as a group until the foals are about three years old, as survival becomes unlikely for the young zebras if they separate from the group. The statistics are unforgiving. Up to 50% of zebra foals fall prey to lions, hyenas, and large predatory birds. Those fortunate enough to survive must leave the group of their peers between one and three years old to form their own herd. Since we've touched on the topic of their offspring, it's worth mentioning the zebra milk that they'll feed their young for about a year. What makes it extraordinary is its pink color. Zebras genuinely nurture their offspring with pink milk. Want to know why? This color results from a very high concentration of sugar and proteins, and it's entirely lactose-free. Moreover, zebra milk contains a significant number of beneficial microorganisms that protect the young ones from pathogenic microbes abundant in the African environment. In a word, zebras are remarkable milk producers. The zebra foals are incredibly fortunate because their mother's milk is more nutritious than that of other mammals. Zebra milk has a fat content of 8 to 10 percent, essentially making it cream. With this nourishment, a zebra foal grows rapidly, almost visibly. It gains about 23 ounces in weight daily. Another interesting fact is that zebra milk is highly valued in the African continent and can only be purchased at a significant cost. However, obtaining even a single bottle of it is extremely challenging because domesticating or taming a zebra is nearly impossible. Zebras have several natural enemies in the wild. Who are the main predators of zebras? Their primary enemy is the African lion. Furthermore, zebras are hunted by other predators like cheetahs and leopards. They face threats from alligators and crocodiles at watering holes, and zebra foals are vulnerable to hyenas. In addition to predators, zebras have another omnipresent enemy, insects. Horseflies, tsetseflies, and other bloodsuckers are a problem for nearly all hoofed mammals. Annoying insects constantly bite, buzz around, get in their eyes, and carry numerous dangerous diseases. In general, life in the African savanna is fraught with many risks and dangers for animals, and zebras are no exception. Typically, striped horses don't just succumb to physiological aging, but more often than not, to the carnivorous teeth of predators. 
Those that are older and weaker become more susceptible to becoming prey as they age. As zebras get older, their ability to flee, defend themselves, or even hide in a concealed place significantly diminishes. With age, the risks of zebras becoming someone's meal catastrophically increase. Generally, the average lifespan of zebras in the wild is about 25 to 30 years. But in captivity, under favorable conditions, they can live up to 40 years. The Grevy zebra is listed as endangered in the International Union for Conservation of Nature's IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, with less than 2,000 adult individuals in its populations. The mountain zebra is categorized as vulnerable, and the plain zebra is considered near-threatened. There are around 35,000 mountain zebras on the African continent, and their population is fortunately trending upward. Plain zebras, on the other hand, have a population ranging from 150,000 to 250,000. Although this might seem substantial at first glance, it is essential to consider that their population was three times larger 50 years ago. It's easy to understand that the decreasing trend is evident. Human intervention has led to habitat fragmentation and population fragmentation for zebras. The primary threats are not hard to find. Hunting these animals for their beautiful hides and meat, as well as the deliberate destruction of their habitats. It's worth noting that by the beginning of the 20th century, the skins of African striped beauties were used for making rugs and upholstery for furniture throughout the African continent. In the 20th century, human behavior has not shown significant improvement, and such production entered international markets. The chase for exotic interiors among affluent consumers required an increase in supply. Businesses that involve the destruction of zebras have been and continue to be highly profitable. Impoverished Africans are willing to take the lives of these animals to earn around $2,000 for each one. Unfortunately, things have reached a point where the last female quagga zebra died at the Natura Artis Magistra Zoo in Amsterdam. For example, the Cape Mountain Zebra, a subspecies of the mountain zebra, nearly went extinct due to mass hunting and habitat destruction. By the 1950s, there were fewer than 50 individuals left. Currently, the plain zebra in the wild is not facing extinction, but the currently part is essential. There are no guarantees that in the foreseeable future, we will only be able to see them within strictly protected reserves. And this is an optimistic scenario. It's fortunate that some intelligent individuals came up with the excellent idea of creating protected areas worldwide, especially in Africa. Vital conservation areas for zebras have been established in the Cheriba Chakura National Park in Ethiopia and in Buffalo Springs, Samburu, and Shaba National Reserves in Kenya. The plain zebra can feel relatively safe in the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, Tsavo and Maasai Mara in Kenya, Hwange National Park in Zimbabwe, Estosha Park in Namibia, and Kruger National Park in South Africa. Due to their distinctive black and white stripes, zebras are among the most recognizable mammals. They have been associated with beauty and elegance, often being referred to as the most graceful among quadrupeds. Zebras have always been popular in photographs, and the majority of professional wildlife photographers rightly consider them to be the most photogenic animals. These striped African beauties are frequently featured as main characters in literature, especially in children's literature, as it has long been a good educational tradition to use zebras to represent the letter Z in children's alphabet books. The striking black and white pattern is widely used for body art, and designers experiment with these colors in ready-to-wear clothing. 
furniture manufacturers boldly paint cabinets with contrasting stripes. In African folklore, zebras have been vividly depicted in culture and art for millennia. They were depicted in rock art across the continent. Folk tales have offered various explanations for why zebras have stripes, and some stories vividly illustrate that evil forces mercilessly punished zebras by burning them. This brings to mind Rudyard Kipling, the famous author of The Jungle Book, who expressed his fictional version of how zebras got their stripes in a story called How the Leopard Got His Spots. His words were, the giraffe was over tall and couldn't see the trees, and the zebra was all over zebra and couldn't hide. In Africa, a Maasai proverb is still prevalent. A man without culture is like a zebra without stripes. One shouldn't argue with folk wisdom. It's worth mentioning that on the African continent, the black and white stripes of zebras symbolize the unbreakable connection between a man and a woman. And in one Zimbabwean city, such stripes even adorn an educational institution. The zebra is a national symbol of Botswana, and its image can be seen on currency banknotes and almost all postage stamps. Zebras are often characters in animated films, adding beauty and compositional perfection. Movies like The Lion King and Madagascar have long been favorites for both children and adult audiences. Friends, philosophers typically liken our lives to zebras, where a black stripe is followed by a white one, and a white stripe is followed by a black one. This pattern, much like the zebra's striking coat, has become a symbol of the variability of our existence. Perhaps it will continue this way as long as the world exists, just as the zebra with its remarkable coloring endures, a symbol of the capricious nature of our lives. And perhaps there's no need to paint it with any specific colors. Nature has done that for us. <laughs>